Oni was developed by Bungie's satellite studio Bungie West. The title would end up being their one and only game. After being delayed quite a bit, Oni released in 2001 on the PC, Mac, and PS2. While most people think Halo when they think of Bungie, Oni's development had started many years prior, back in 1997. Taking place in the year 2032, the story unfolds over the course of about a week and a half. The dystopian future was probably one of the key selling points of the game to me back in the day. The game features the character codenamed Kanoko, and had both hand-to-hand -hand combat and gunslinging. One of the complaints of the game was the lack of multiplayer, which was featured in early previews and hands-on demos but was ultimately cut. While I would love to say that early builds of the game with multiplayer intact had been recovered, so far I haven't seen anything. Instead, I want to focus on the property of Oni itself and a bit of game-leaking history. While Oni was being developed by Bungie West, it would actually come to be owned by Take-Two by the time things were said and done, due to the game's release date being moved further and further away, and cash flow essentially coming to a halt. Take-Two even had Rockstar Canada produce the PS2 port of the game. Take-Two initially seemed to have quite a bit of faith in the property, more on that in a second. Back in 2007, a blog by Surfer Girl leaked some details of then-in-development games like L.A. Noir and Prince of Persia 4. She also posted a story of 18 cancelled games you never knew existed unless you worked on them. Among those that she listed, I have since found the arena fighting game based on the AI movie, called AI the Circuit, and Damage Inc., the Metallica car game that was just featured on this channel. Others, like Deus Ex 3, different from the release game, have since been confirmed by other sources. Needless to say, that list is legit, and looks even more so as time goes on. While we may never know the identity of Surfer Girl, and hi if you're out there, here is yet another game to cross off that list. Oni 2 Death and Taxes by Angel Studios, later known as Rockstar San Diego. Now if you think that name is a bit odd, rest assured that it wasn't necessarily the final title, but somebody thought it was decent enough. Or maybe it was just a joke. Either way, it's what the game says. The video footage you are seeing here is from an early build from December 10th, 2002, and is seen here running on a PS2. The gameplay is still incredibly simplistic, featuring mostly test levels along with a partially playable level. Despite this fact, this build is one of the last that was made for the project. Before I get started, I'd like to thank all the developers from this game who are willing to talk to me. From those on the project for just a few weeks, to those that were on it for a bit of a longer period of time. There were quite a few of you willing to talk to me this time, so I hope I'm doing justice to the work that you had done. Work on Oni 2 started months before one of Angel Studios' other projects, Transworld Surf, was released for the PS2 and Xbox, coinciding with the Xbox's launch. Happy 15th birthday, Xbox. That puts the project's beginnings at the end of 2000 or maybe early 2001, as much as such dates can be placed, especially this many years later. This means that the original Oni by Bungie was either in the process of wrapping up or had just been released, showing that Take-Two was wasting no time on his sequel. I would be doing the game and its story a huge disservice if I don't mention the late Francis Tsai. Beyond working on games, he worked on comics for Marvel, on the Magic the Gathering cards, Dungeons and Dragons, magazines, TV and film, including TMNT. On Oni 2, he was the lead concept artist, providing much of the visual direction that would heavily influence other artists, and in turn, the game's development. I have spoken with multiple developers on this project, all of whom remember Francis not only for his talent, but for his friendship as well. Many of them would later work with Francis on other projects as well. But in 2010, Francis was diagnosed with ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. Despite being unable to move his hands or body, he adapted, painting with his toe on his iPhone. Once he was unable to do that, he continued to share his art, using eye tracking software to continue. Francis Tsai passed away on April 23, 2015, at the age of 48. Oni 2 was just one of many projects that Francis worked on. I hope that everybody out there is enjoying the work that he did, so that his art can continue to live on. Like many games of its time, you are looking at a game with large levels, at least when compared to console games of the past. 
This included huge cities and as many bad guys as the consoles could push. A huge focus was placed on seamless hand-to-hand -to, -hand to shooting combat. The initial design had called for a completely free-flowing combat where the player would essentially be able to control individual limbs, attacking and shooting on a per-limb basis. But development hadn't been going smoothly. By early 2002, nearly a year into the game's development, the team only had a few small tech demos to show for their efforts. An attempt was made to put the project back on track and get things moving, but as of April 2002, one developer I spoke with had estimated that there were at least 18 months of development left to go. This was not something that Take-Two had wanted to hear. Much effort had been put into those tech demos and the scripting language that would make everything work, but there really wasn't a game. While the Oni scripting tool was in-depth with a huge amount of documentation, it would prove to be overwhelming. With the game design itself being more limited when compared to it, at least the design that was put onto paper for others to see. The lack of direction is one of the contributing factors that would result in the game's cancellation. While many games do succeed with that sort of development as you go approach, it was clear that only two would not be one of those games. Now, that isn't to say that there was zero plan, but I haven't been able to get a hold of anyone who actually knows what that plan was. I do know that the designers for the game are out there, and if you see this video, I would love to talk to you to fill in those gaps. Towards autumn of 2002, the team worked on the demo that you have been seeing, specifically the more complex Incinerator demo. Not only would this give an idea of what the game would be like, but it also served to see if the mechanics would even work as a game or if it was even possible for the team to create the type of game that they wanted to create. The studio already had issues internally, proving that there were too many hands in the game development basket, which would only contribute to the game's shaky development cycle. Mind you, this isn't the most unusual thing in game development, and hundreds of games are still released every year, but Angel Studios itself would be changing, as the studio was in the process of being acquired and changed to Rockstar San Diego. As is the case with many games, when studios go through such drastic changes, something had to give. Sequels being extremely popular at that time, and I say that as if things have changed, the team had thought that Onia 2 would survive the transition, especially since some developers had heard that Rockstar liked the Oni 2 demo and may have contributed to the studio being picked up in the first place, along with the studio's work on Midnight Club, of course. But compared to other projects being worked on, especially when you look at Rockstar's success with Grand Theft Auto 3, Oni 2 just wasn't that high up on the totem pole, so it was cut down and cancelled, all but relegated to that blog post in 2007, until now, of course. Some people shifted to work on Red Dead Revolver, which had its own issues, while others would be moved to a different project entirely, which should be very interesting, so do stick around to the end of this video to hear just a little bit on that project. As for the possibility of multiplayer, it wasn't off the table by any means. Nearly every game of the time had multiplayer, and I'm sure that is something that the team would have loved to have seen, but there wasn't really any plan in place for multiplayer in Oni 2, beyond that thought. It wasn't something that was worked on, especially with the main meat of the game being so far off. Those racing titles are worth mentioning too. Oni 2 was being built off their previous tech used to make the racing titles, not being quite as fully featured as the Angel game engine which would later be upgraded to Rage, the engine that has since been used to make most of Rockstar's titles. The engine itself was extremely capable though. Just one glance at Midnight Club or Midtown Madness 2 should show that the huge worlds for the game wouldn't be an issue at all. But making that gameplay transition from a racing game to a action game that was really breaking new ground would prove to be just out of reach for the developers at Angel Studios. Our newest Patreon supporters are Malcolm, Stuart, Logan, and Paul. Their pledges help to preserve stories like these. I do have a video coming out that talks about why not everything I have can just simply be leaked, from the anonymous issue to legal issues that myself and others have already run into. That said, I do think that this game will be available online, not through me, but through some other guy. I'm sure that upcoming video will only attract the best comments. Do check us out at Patreon at patreon.com slash p2p online. But the story of Oni 2 does not end quite when the studio was acquired. 
The team responsible for Grand Theft Auto 3 used the renderware-based GTA 3 engine to create a prototype for a secret agent game. The team had hoped that the former Angel Studios could pick up and run with the concept, hoping that the team at Angel Studios would draw from 1967's In Lake Flint or Timothy Dalton's James Bond, while building off some of the technology that had already been started for Oni 2. From the handful of developers I talked with, this didn't get very far at all, with a lot of focus being placed on Red Dead Revolver instead. But if a secret agent game sounds familiar, well, it should. Rockstar North had long been working on Agent for the PS3. Very little has ever been seen of the PS3 version of Agent, and it is unlikely that the Rockstar North version of Agent was a direct continuation of the work done at Angel Studios in 2003, but it does show that somebody at Rockstar has been kicking around the idea for a secret agent game for quite some time. So don't be surprised when a secret agent game resurfaces once again, maybe this time for the PS4 or dare I say it, the PS5? Fans continue to request that Bungie have another go at Oni. With their hands being full with Destiny and the right seemingly belonging to Take Two still, I don't know that we will ever see another Oni from them in quite some time. But with titles from this era being revived, I don't think it would be a smart idea to completely discount the possibility. Hit that subscribe button, check us out on Patreon, and watch a few more videos of games that were canceled before they could make it to market. Until next time, thank you for watching.